Hey, it's Joe Glines, and uh, we're going to walk through various ways you can get... All my examples here are getting, but you can use these to set values on a web page also. Um, we're, we're walking through with Selenium and Auto Hotkey driving it. Um, right now, I have all these different ways, and I've just commented um, most of them out, except for one. We're going to do one at a time. That way it's a little clearer of what is happening here. Um, I think if they were all visible, we'd get a little lost. And if you haven't seen the other ones, there's there's another video where I walk through launching Chrome. Um, sorry, I'm I'm launching the Chrome driver here with Selenium, um, navigating to my page. But go check that one out. And also, I did an intro to getting data from a page, and that's probably a good one to watch before this because I'm not going to talk to a lot of the um, other aspects of it of of what these other things mean. So let me with that. Let me save, reload. I'm going to launch it. And here you're going to see, right now, we're going to get by tag name, um, and this is the get elements by tag name, uh, and actually that was that threw me for a while, so it's by tag, right? It's not tag name. And here I'm getting an array, you know, I should have had by name, this is an array, um, I think, and I haven't actually tried this, but this, what I've found is they have two, so let's say find element by tag, and let's remove this. When I remove this, now, this will turn back the just first. Now I'm going to save this, reload it. Now we're going to have two here on this one, so I, I lied. We'll, we'll do these two together. Um, hopefully this brings back the first paragraph, because I didn't specify which one. And when you use it without the S, and you say, just give me that, it should return the first one. Let's see if it does it. Ah, look at that. So that grabbed my first paragraph, and if I had my uh, browser tool up, you'd see it, but um, let's not worry about that. And the second one will be the same exact thing, because this is by tag name. Let me go in here um, and see here where we're specified. This one is no S. This one has an S. This one I specified the item, is, and they're, um, they're not zero-based. They start at one, so that's a, an important distinction to remember with Selenium. And so this is just first, and this, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong one. Um, so that's the first in an array, and this is just first, there. Okay, so, all right, we've documented that one. I'll comment those two out, and let's get this next one. So ID, there is no multiple in IDs, so there is no S you can add to this and get the second ID of the same thing. Alright, I got my ID, so let's comment that out, and we'll go, to, let's do the next two, because this is similar to the, the tag, get by tag, instead of tag name, remember it's tag. Here, we're getting the element by name, and this of course will return just the first one, so if you just want the first one, this is convenient, however, you have to remember two different types of syntax, right, to add in, if you want, um, whether you want, I could get the first one, right, by putting this, and I could just have one consistent call, which is probably what I'd prefer. That way it's just simpler to memorize the syntax. Um, but here I'm getting the second one. So, um, you know, let me add here. First. Try to be consistent. Just first. And um, this is returning an array, but it's the second one because it's the second. So I'm going to save this, reload, launch. Okay, so this is my input, um, the S, where is the name, name S, see, that's what it was pulling off of there, and the second one, even though they're identical, the what this is the first search and this is the second search, I, I demonstrated this in the other video, uh, but that that's grabbing, so let me comment both of those out, and, the alright, now we're going to do class, and we'll do the same thing with class, we'll do those two at a time, so this is the first one, and the second one, uh, first, first, again, there's no S, is getting the attribute. The second one we include it, and here I'm getting the second because it's number two. Save, reload, launch. So here and somewhere in here you would see here's class is entry title, right? And that's what we're pulling off of. There's that and that. We we'll go back. See here entry title, right? That's what we're grabbing. That's what's identifying that. Comment, comment out. All right, let's go ahead and do. Um, both of these at the same time. So 
the first one is a partial match for the text. So um, I'm finding an element by partial link text, and then I'm going to do an exact match by by link text. So this has to be the exact, the entire text of what's there. This one, I'm just see how it's just a time, and here it's it's actually here also. Um, so this is just partial, but find the, it would find the first one. I think I think I could do. I think I did try that with an S. I can't remember if that worked or not, but um, go ahead and try it out. Right? I know you guys know what you're doing. This is just showing some <laughs> some of the stuff took me a little while to figure out. So there's the the partial match, and then the full match. All right. So those were things that were very similar to Stefan Auto Hotkey um, with Com. Sorry. Uh, these next ones though, we're going to use CSS um, and and I think you can do that in AutoHotKey as well. I just didn't use it. Um, here, it's interesting with CSS, it's, it's similar to XPath also, which is similar to this um, query selector, which I have a, a couple videos on that, um, talking through how you can make it incredibly complex, which of course is good and bad. But here, I've put in, it's going to look at all the input tags, right? So any tag that has input and has a name of S, and I'm going to return the first one. So let me I'm going to do these one at a time because uh, it gets a little confusing here. So this is going to be, again, it's going to look for the input tag, and that's what these are inputs, and the class is S. Um, and we saw that earlier that the, well, this is the HTML from it. So the name is S, and the, and the class is S, and the input is the tag, the opening element, right? Um, now, this next one, let me, I wanted to show them side by side here. So, so see this here? This is exactly what's here. All I did was I stripped off the requirement to have it under input. So if I had um, the name S under anything else, it doesn't have to be under the input tag, right? And so it, it pulls back the same thing. And in this case, I'm just using where the name is equal to S instead of structuring that hierarchy, right? So it's not as specific. Um, and just depending on what your goal is, you, you may or may not want to add that in there. The next one here, I have an example of using ID, and of course I could have put something here, and that would have said, look for the, um, a, it has the tag of that and an ID of this, but here I'm just getting the ID is site description. So we pulled that back out, see ID equals site description, you can see it right there. Um, this next one here, we're looking for a class, so here's one way you can do class. I think, I didn't try it, but there are CSS abbreviations um, that you can use. I think in place of these words, I know for the query selector you can. I think it, in this one you can as well. Um, I just didn't test it, and I'd rather have the words because I don't, I don't use CSS. So to me, the abbreviations, I think a dot is name or ID, I forget, and an asterisk is something, and it's just confusing to me because I don't know them. So we grabbed uh, entry title by class, and let's do this last one here. Here I'm looking for um, the an A tag and the, the href, so the URL is this reference, and this is my LinkedIn profile, and, and please connect with me if you're not already. So here is the uh, the overall one. I believe it's this link up here, uh, and it's it's pulling it back, right? So I, I said look for the a tag, and then has an href equal to this. So the CSS is incredibly customizable, right? You can put in a ton of different stuff. I have a couple documents. Um, looks like I closed my folder where I have them. Let me pop one open here real quick here. Whoop. Millennium, I think they're in here. Uh, da -da, maybe, oh, maybe it's under training. Yeah, so these two, I'll put links to them. Um, and, and for some reason when I open it, I need to, to fix this, but we'll open it with a Chrome and bring it over here. So here is one of them, which helps give examples of doing things think over here so you XPath which we're going to cover here in a second CSS the DOM and selenium and and it does a really good job um, of helping walk through how to grab things from a from a page right the the other one which it just depends which way you're trying to think about it um, they're both very useful so which one was I on here groups this is locators table okay so here we go so let's open this one with Chrome 
and this one is just organized differently right I think it has most of the same information um, and this goes through also the um, XPath CSS DOM Selenium but it's grouping them by the, the different things instead of the the approach right so, um, so depending on which way you like but these this is the, both of these are very helpful documents to help understand um, the different ways you can grab stuff from web scraping and, and they, they they cover a lot of different things in here um, it's, it's a very helpful reference I would definitely recommend downloading and keeping them and, and I'll post the link uh, on my website all right so that was there now in XPath XPath is pretty awesome um, I wish uh, I could I could use it more especially with the IE com version because uh, once you understand XPath, it, it's amazing of, of how much you can grab a lot of different things under it um, and how you can specify. I didn't get into it here, but the query selector all does a similar approach where you can get all the things under something and, and a list of them or be very particular. So anyway, we'll go in here. I'm going to launch this. And I'll, you know what? I'll, let's go ahead and launch it, and then I'll show you how you can get the XPath. Um, there's two different ways. This, if you're a Firefox user, this FirePath add-on um, is very handy. Alright, so let me pop this open here. This is showing here. We grabbed it by the XPath. Well, let's see if I go up here. Is it automating the world? Yeah, I think it's this one. I'm going to say inspect. Let me see if I can make this big enough. Um, and now here, if I wanted to get this, I right click on here and say copy and see how here, copy, selector, copy XPath, right? And that's where I could do this and now, when I, I'm just going to paste it up here see what it put into my clipboard um, that would be the X path I could use to get that and what's, what's awesome is you don't have to necessarily take it the way it is you can tweak it right and you can say you know what I don't want to have it under the span tag um, it, so I'm just gonna put it in like that and then I would just put this into my my query um, I believe these two back path, uh, slashes and the star is, are telling you the path for it, where to look, and it has an ID. So the at sign, and I will bet you money. Let me see, can I can I get the CSS? I don't remember. Like I said, I just don't use CSS. Copy selector, no. I was hoping it would say the, the path, um, this copy the CSS path. But let me also, let me start, I was going to say fire up Firefox, but that's just too many fires. Um, and now go to my website and here if I cut right click on here because I have firebug um, install and firepath so inspect in firepath and so this right here gives me the xpath right right there so it's a little more isolated I, I and, and it's right there oh look at that it even has the uh, that would be the I'm sure the CSS for it so that that's cool I didn't realize that I have no what is sizzle okay I don't know um, but this one allows you to get the apparently the CSS or XPath um, and to get the information which of course you would put back into your your here right uh, you would put it all the way populate this value here for the XPath uh, let's do the last one here where I had grabbed um, something else on the page but you can just see you start looking at it and there's the at sign and you just have to remember what those things mean right but um, I think the add is the uh, yeah, at ID blah 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 with under a list, the eighth element under a list, under form, under label, under input. And this is why I'm like, you know, what if that website puts in multiple, you know, adds something to their list and it shifts, right? You're going to lose that. Um, and that's why I'd consider, even though I like XPaths, some, some things about it, I would consider tweaking this and not taking the exact specific thing. Of course, it depends how frequently the uh, website updates. So that's it. Um, this should really help allow you to, to grab more things from a website um, in the different elements. Uh, I'm sorry, different methods. Thanks.